Hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Tyler Marquart, and I am here today uh, via Shango Los and Shaping Fire. And um, we're going to show you how to make bubble hash uh, using a washing machine. Uh, kind of more, more on a, a way of entry level or in a position in which maybe you don't have access to every single tool that these multi-million dollar facilities have uh, that you may see on Instagram. Uh, we think this is an important way to help people kind of get into the industry, get into the, uh, hash making, um, and just making hash for yourself as a medical patient um, or just a home grower. Um, there's a lot of different tools out there and uh, ways to make hash. You can make it by hand, you can make it by uh, using the machine, and uh, this way is going to try to show you an efficient way to bring that uh, home and, uh, and we'll uh, be able to have really high quality hash uh, at your uh, disposal. So today we're going to be talking about the different types of tools we use, we're going to be talking about the different types of material, uh, all the steps that go into the production of this uh, hash using this machine. This is a 20 gallon uh, washing machine. This is uh, an older model that I uh, gifted Shango years ago. Uh, we've been using it every year for probably the last five years uh, to make hash. And you've seen other videos uh, with the material that's come out. And so this is uh, a great machine. They're, they're hardy in the last. Um, they handle up to about 900 grams. You could probably put about 1,000 grams of material in there and they would uh, still put out a high quality product. Um, but nonetheless, uh, you can get these for used for a couple hundred dollars off of Craigslist. You can get them new offline for a few hundred dollars as well, uh, probably up to 500 bucks with shipping and whatnot. Um, you know, as of the, the, these days here, the prices change pretty quickly. But um, 20 gallon machines are great to go with if you if you're running uh, some bigger outdoor plants. Uh, if you have uh, you know more than a couple thousand uh, grams of material and you want to get through it in a couple days. This is a great way to do it. If you don't produce that much material all at once um, and you're getting it over time, uh, there are also five gallon machines that are available too. They're smaller, they work just as well, um, they're efficient and they get you a good material uh, to start with to, to get your medicine. Uh, you also can do hand washing too uh, by using a power drill or just uh, a spatula and, and pushing the material around uh, with your hand. Um, a lot of people actually, we'll get into this later, prefer that method because it gives you uh, what you would consider a much higher quality product because there's less agitation and you're getting the, the most ripe trichomes off the head of the, uh, uh, the plant material. But uh, if you're trying to get the most quality, highest quality and the most material all at once, the, the machine is the best option to, uh, to go to. Um, another uh, tool that's super important that you need is going to be a garbage can. Um, some people will say, okay, garbage cans are not the ideal, you need to use food grade. Yes, ideally using food grade, everything would be um, the optimal thing to do. But again, not everybody has access to food grade quality uh, materials and they still want to try to make hash. And uh, is this going to give you a tainted product? Uh, probably not, you know. Uh, over time, it may deg degrade and leach. Um, but if you're running the first few times and whatnot, it's, it's not going to. Uh, we've been doing it for years and uh, we're still running marathons. So um, again, you always want to try to lean towards the best practices and, and refine your technique as you go along using better tools. But if you're in a position and a limited budget, uh, you're on, uh, you know, you're, if you're a medical patient like myself, you may not have a ton of money to invest all at once and thousands of dollars of equipment. This is this is a great option and way to go to get where you need to start. Um, so the, the garbage can is an option. You can work your way up to uh, food grade uh, tubs and, um, and stainless steel is also another great option as well too. Again, stainless steel is expensive, but you can go to uh, restaurant stores, use restaurant stores and, and find equipment there as well too for sale. Um, we're gonna need a dull knife uh, or a straight blade, anything that has uh, you know a couple inches that you can use um, to scrape a material off with. Um, this is a ceramic blade, um, not very sharp, um, which is great. You don't want to cut the thing. I often like to use two so that when I do scrape, I can scrape off using that. Um, and then also sometimes 
a large uh, spoon is a great option to help scoop out and or um, shave off any of the stuff that you got on your, uh, your knives. A pizza box is also going to be helpful um, if you can access that, uh, or cardboard. Uh, pizza boxes are really easy to use because they're uh, convenient, they have a lid, um, it keeps material out from getting in. Um, and the cardboard itself will help absorb some of the water that is left over in the bubble hash uh, as it's drying. Uh, also, I like to slip a little piece of parchment paper in there. Uh, you can label it with the different screen sizes and separate your, uh, your pulls or your runs according to the size of the um, uh, micron of the screen. And uh, that helps you kind of organize it to find out which section maybe is the best for you, works the best for your application of what you're looking to do. Um, these are obviously readily available found at your pe local pizza place. Uh, you might have to pay a couple bucks to grab them, uh, but you can use them and uh, they're easy to get a hold of. Uh, like I said, parchment paper. Uh, I like to use the unbleached um, brown stuff. It seems to work really well. Haven't had any issues. Uh, one of the other things that we use is uh, a Frisbee. Um, you're probably going to look into a Frisbee or a garbage can lid depending on the size of uh, the material you're using. So this is something like this 20 gallon garbage lid uh, will help as well too if you're using larger bags. Um, a pancake spatula. So if you've ever seen a pancake spatula before, uh, we don't have one right now, but basically it is a spatula that has some uh, holes in it and that will help push material around or flatten down material when you're pushing it, first putting it into the machine. Um, and then of course there's the Buckner funnel and the freeze dryer. So the Buckner funnel you can go on uh, Shaping Fire. We have another video that, uh, the, we have two other videos that uh, talk about and walk through that use of that technology. And uh, if you could afford one, freeze dryers are also a wonderful option. Uh, but again, that's a, a multi-thousand dollar investment. Um, and they also have a tendency to um, malfunction. Um, so, and there's no real insurance programs on those. So um, again, this is kind of approach to what uh, hash making in a way of basic uh, utility and tools that you may be able to find readily available in any grocery store or any uh, hardware store near you. Um, but maybe not the most like advanced technology. There are probably a, a ton of other videos out there that can talk to you about that. Um, but this is just going to help you get started and get going and get your uh, get you processing your material at home so that you can have really high quality hash uh, that you know goes from farm to table, um, or in our case, farm to bowl. Uh, so uh, first of all, we uh, need to procure a set of uh, bags. These bags were uh, donated to us by our friends over at the Press Club. Um, they do a wonderful job with all different types of accessories, or bags and rosin. Um, so if you, if you need anything, please go ahead and check out their website, which is thepressclub.co. Press um, again, that's thepressclub.co. And uh, you can find these bags. Um, they are called the Press Club Wash Bags. Um, they come in a variety of different sizes, and they come in a variety of different um, amounts. So you can buy one bag, you can buy um, an eight-bag set, and you can buy, uh, I believe, a three-bag set as well, too. Um, and so each bag has its own micron size. It starts at 220, and it goes down to 45. Um, there's def uh, other increments in the, in the middle, too. And those basically separate the size of the trichome head um, that the plant produces. So when the plant grows, it produces trichomes. They don't all develop at the same time. They develop at different rates. And um, so you may have different size trichome heads, and they also are multiple different types of trichomes. So other trichomes have smaller heads that'll be removed. You have glandular trichomes, sessile trichomes, and um, systolith trichomes. So we, we want to avoid collecting systolith trichomes, but we want the glandular trichomes, or mostly what we're trying to uh, procure. Um, so those bags are the essential part of the component to what you're looking for uh, to make bubble hash. The, uh, as of today, our, uh, shooting the video, the uh, eight bag set on the Press Club, so Club site is uh, $299. So uh, a washing machine, right, let's say it roughly costs three or $500. There you're looking at $299 for that. You're a few hundred dollars investment already into this. You wanna make sure that um, you, you know, you can utilize these tools to the best uh, at, um, tech, 
best technology that you can. Um, so preferred material to use, we're going to start, you could either do fresh frozen or you could do dry material. Fresh frozen is when you chop the plant down at harvest and you immediately put it into a freezer and you let that material freeze and then you take it and you put it into the machine and you start washing it. It's a really great way to capture uh, monoterpenes and other uh, volatile organic compounds that would uh, evaporate or uh, at room temperature and you may not have in a long term. Some people prefer this method uh, because of the uh, quality of the end product. The end quality of the end product also has a different color. It usually is a little lighter in color and um, has a slightly different consistency as well too. With dried material that's cured, that material will uh, have a different flavor profile. Um, it will also have a different color to the end material. It will be slightly darker as well too. Uh, because the trichomes develop over time and they, they convert as well as the terpenes uh, will change over time. Uh, Frenchy Cannoli talks a lot about this and I urge you to go out there and look into the videos that he has as well too because um, he's uh, spoken a lot about this. Uh, rest in peace Frenchy, we, uh, we very much appreciate your contributions to the, uh, the hash community. Um, so. When you have dry material, you're going to be looking at somewhere maybe between 10 to 15 percent return on your um, uh, your harvest from the hash. This is dependent on the quality of the material you use. So the higher the quality of the material, the better the hash that's going to come out. Uh, it's also important to know that not every single plant washes or runs through the machine and provides an end quality product really well. Some do much better than others. I wrote an article called Breeding Deceive on the Pressco website on their blog uh, and it really kind of gets more in depth into what makes a good hash plant. Um, we've found that some plants just really wash better over and over and over again. They hold their quality over longer than other plants and um, you know it just has to be something that you, you do over time. The more you practice the better you're going to find the nuances of this plant washes really well because of this characteristic or this plant doesn't wash so well because it gets too sticky and the resin sticks to the bag and you can't get it off. Um, so there are a lot of practices involved. It's like anything. You want to get good at anything, you got to practice it and do it over and over again. So the same thing goes with making hash. The more practice you have, the more errors you'll make, the more you'll learn from those errors and the more successes you'll have, the more you'll learn from those successes. You'll combine those two informations and you'll be able to move on and, and really make the best quality product you can for yourself. So um, there also is this other way to really kind of know before, because you don't want to maybe take your whole crop and say, let's wash it, and you really get a poor return. You can do what's called the jar tech. Um, this is a simple method where you take a mason jar, fill it with ice and water, take about 10 grams of flour at harvest, put it in there, cap it, give it a good shake, and wait a couple seconds. Like shake it for 30 seconds, shake it for a minute, and then let the trichome heads fall to the bottom. You'll see the collection at the bottom, and again, this is something that you'll have to do over and over and over again to, to gauge what is good and what is average and what is below average. Uh, having the jar tech really helps you analyze what the plant is able to do and give you when you have, uh, when you're looking to, to procure a hash plant. So the jar tech is a great option to really kind of field test what you're doing before you invest your whole crop into washing and, and dumping it into a situation where it just didn't return because it just wasn't that type of plant or it was it didn't come out the way you wanted to that time. Um, so definitely check into that. Um, trichome development is super important when you're looking to uh, process material. Uh, you're really going to want to look into um, the get what's called a loop or a magnifying glass or something that can let you look at the trichome head up close and really see it over time. If you track during the last few weeks of your plant's growth and you watch those trichome heads expand, they'll get to a point where they'll stop expanding and that's pretty much when they're ready to, that, that's when the, the plant is pretty much ready to harvest is when that bulbous head is at its, at its fullest con, um, potential. You don't want to go too far, you want it at its like the top of the bell curve. 
and um, a couple people uh, talk about this. Frenchie Cannoli talked about this. Swami talks about this. And this is when you shake a plant, you can smell it. Or when you walk past it, it's very vibrant in its smell. And that's because the trichome heads are ripe and they're falling off. And they're opening and releasing the terpenes that you can smell and the other volatile organic compounds. So learning these techniques when you're harvesting, learning these techniques when you're processing, learning these techniques when you go to wash, all really help at, to add up to an end quality product that really just gives you better material at the end. Again, practice, 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 research, practice, and then you'll make your applications and you'll refine them and you'll end up really, really, really enthused with what's, what's happening at the, at the back end of the process. Um, a lot of the a lot of the harvest timing and a lot of the processing is also very individual to the person. Um, what I prefer and what Shango likes and uh, what other people like is completely different. I might like something very lethargic, and so I like to let my plants go a little bit longer. Shango might like something that's very uplifting and energetic. Um, so he might like to harvest his plants a little bit early or right in the middle at the, 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 the high peak of, of moderation. So you, learning your plant is really important and learning when you like to harvest your plants is really important. Now, there are obviously conditions when you have to chop and drop because of environmental conditions, law enforcement, whatever the reason being, um, you may have to adjust what you like to do to the conditions around you. But in general, if you're repeating the process every year and you're, you're only growing a few plants at home under your medical license or under the legal state laws, then you can refine your process and learn, or you can acquire material from other people and process that material. So learning your harvest times, learning your plants, learning what plants wash really well, all really help you advance faster through the whole process. Um, Storing that material is also important. So the more you touch, the more you process, the more it moves around, the more it bangs around, it's gonna bang up the, the, the plant material and it may knock off the trichome head, it may crush, break it open and, and open those volatile organic compounds and the, and the uh, cannabinoids into, um, uh, into the, onto the leaf surface. So they won't be able to be acquired because when we wash and we sieve, we're trying to collect the trichome head as an individual head and then collect a lot of them and make sure that there isn't any plant material or any any other material that is left. So once we have all those things dialed in, and of course, you know, it takes time to, to practice this. You're gonna have to go through some harvests and you're gonna have to figure out what you're gonna, you know, what works for you. But once you get all that down, it's really gonna become more of like tying your shoes and a walkthrough process of getting, getting that end product. So. Starting out now with using the machine, we've already preloaded this machine um, because it's just easier. So what you would normally do is you would come in, you put a layer of ice um, at the bottom, cover it up. This machine can handle up to a thousand grams of material. You can use less material, just add less water. And so if you only have, let's say, 300 grams of material, uh, you're gonna use a little bit less than half the machine. So here. We don't have as much material today. We don't have a thousand grams that we're gonna be putting into this machine. So we're using less water. Uh, you can see the, the water conden uh, condensating on the outside here and not up here. So our water level stops here with the ice and the water. And, um, but we start here with the ice at the bottom. So you start with the ice layer at the bottom, that goes in and then you layer your cannabis on the top of that. And then you layer another ice layer on top of that as well too. Um, now, you don't have to do it this way. You can just put the ice in there, you can put the material in there, and you can just add water, and, um, and you can do it that way. Um, but this kind of helps keep the, uh, the ice on the top will help keep the material down and help rehydrate it while you're adding your water um, so that it kind of moves through the machine a lot easier and flows and the trichome heads break off with the water application as opposed to uh, breaking off of a mechanical operation from the ice. Um, so there are different types of ice cubes that you can use. Of course, you need to find what's readily available for you. If you have the space at home to make your own ice, 
you and you have filter uh, filters to filter your water to do that it's really that's you know great you can save a lot of money by making your own ice and uh, setting up and you, you can quality control that aspect of the the input one of the really important things to remember when you start using the ice in the water is you want to make sure it's filtered um, you don't want to use any um, water that is out of the tap that you haven't tested um, because there's heavy metals, there can be sulfur. For instance, the, on the island here, there's a lot of sulfur in the water, so we're unable to use that tap water um, because it leaves a sulfur taste in the end product, and uh, we want to try to avoid that. So ideally, um, using distilled water or RO filtered water, or even just regular filtered water. I mean, if you wanted to, you could use a Brita filter, but you're gonna have to do a lot of Brita filtering into other containers to get the amount of water that you need to to do the wash. Um, but water quality is super important. Ice water quality is really important. So when you start making your ice, the quality of the water it, um, going into that is super important. You always want to use distilled or RO water if you can, if you have access to it. If you don't, um, get your wa well water tested and see where it's at. You know, if it's not high in mineral content, it's not high in sulfur or anything that has a distinct smell or taste to it when you drink it, then go ahead and use it. Try and do a couple of runs and see what the hash comes out like. If it comes out okay, then, then you know it's good. If it doesn't, then you got to stick with procuring distilled water or RO water. Um, so now that you have the ice in your water, your ice is layered, your cannabis is layered, your ice is layered on top, you can add your water. That water is going to fill all the way up um, to the top of the ice there. And you're going to let that material sit um, in this for probably anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes. Again, that's dependent on the, the material, how dry it is going in. Um, if it's fresh frozen, obviously it doesn't need to sit in the water for 30 minutes because it's already full of water um, and it's frozen and cold. So you can avoid that. Um, but for the most times, you're going to want to let the plant sit and, and um, uh, soak in the machine for roughly about 30 minutes. Some people like to freeze the material ahead of time. That's awesome if you have freezer space to do that. It's not uh, imperative. It does help the trichome heads break off and, and it slow, uh, makes the process of rehydrating and keeping it cold faster. Um, but it doesn't have to be done. You can just use room temperature flour. It's totally fine. Um, now the runtime is also something that is dependent on what you want to do, the plant material itself, and how much time you have. Um, you can run the plant, uh, the machine for up to 10 minutes uh, and just thrash everything around and try and get everything in one bout. Um, but we found that if you run it in lesser increments, um, you can pull higher quality material out of it at a better rate. So the most ripe trichomes are going to fall off around the first few times that you're doing your first wash and the second wash. So the first wash, you may, may only want to run for one minute or 30 seconds or three minutes. That's up to you. That's something that you need to, to decide what you want to do. If you want the super most ripe trichromes run it for a minute see what comes out run your second wash for three minutes see what comes out and then adapt from there and go on and, and try to make your uh, your uh, corrections that way uh, if you're looking for just getting more food grade quality where you're you're not smoking it and it's not super important that it's um, very clean and uh, uh, unadulterated with plant material then go ahead and just run a longer wash on your first few runs and try to get as much material out of it as you can. Again, practice, right? Find what works for you in the situation that you're doing for the thing that you want to do. Uh, so once you've acquired your bags uh, to wash with, you're going to have your garbage can here and you're going to need to layer them into the can. Uh, you're going to start with the lowest bag, the number 45. Um, then you're going to go up to your 73, then your 90, uh, then you're going to go to your 120, 160, uh, 190, 220. Again, however many bags you buy is dependent on how much you can afford um, and uh, what you want to run. And then you also find out which bags you want to use over time. Um, different bags will uh, 
pull different trichome heads and different plants produce different size trichome heads. So again, it's a practice kind of thing and you'll have to go through a bunch of different material to find out. Um, but once you get your bags, you're gonna take them, like I said, put the lowest number at the bottom, put that bag in first, put it around. You'll have these uh, little tie things to come in here and cinch it in and that will help keep it taut to the, um, the can when you run the water so it doesn't pull the bag into the, uh, um, the whole can. That would not be an ideal situation. Um, so here we would take this, put it in. Um, also, before you put your bags in here, you're going to want to pre-wash them. Go ahead and just take a, a hose. You can use regular water for this, not a huge deal. Um, but just go ahead, wash them out. Um, you may want to kind of fold them up a little bit, put them in some water, wash them. Sometimes from manufacturing, they come with a, a couple loose threads, so you may get some fibers that come off. Um, you know, it's not a big deal. Get in there, wash them, give them a little pre-wash, go ahead, let them dry out, um, and then go ahead and put them in uh, stacked with the 45 at the bottom. Um, some folks will use the 25 bag. I, I'm not a big fan of the 25 bag personally. It's some, it's just, it's not worth it. The material's not there. It doesn't, it's not my personal opinion it's not worth it but if you want to go ahead and use that low of a bag that's cool um use it see what it how it works for you uh, but yeah 25 45 uh 73 so they all and different companies make different size bag numbers um one of the things that you also want to remember too when you buy your bags is to match the diameter of the bag to the opening of the uh, container that you're using so this container is a 20 gallon container because these are specific 20 gallon bags that the Presco makes. Presco also makes them in five gallons, 10 gallons. Uh, you got the 20s here and they go up to 30s as well too, 33s. Um, other companies like the bubble bags, they're gonna have uh, a, a, their biggest bag I think is a 20, 33 bag, which works in a 33 gallon container. Um, and for both 20 and 33 gallons size. Um, but the, the, the Press Club has made more specific bags for uh, different uh, applications. Um, so again, check your bag size with the, the, the website that you order it from and uh, check the size of the uh, container that you're using and make sure they match. Not super inconvenient to have to go out and buy another one, but it, you know, it's an extra 25 bucks that you don't have to spend. Um, so once you get your bags here, you're gonna layer them in. Uh, I don't usually bring them under the uh, handle here because it stretches them out. Um, you really don't want to stretch or pull on the bags really hard uh, because it'll uh, kind of move the, the it, it, they're all in like a mesh form, right? So you have squares, tiny little squares uh, throughout the bag, which is what is used in the sieving process. So if you uh, tighten and loosen, it changes the diameter of the, the, uh, the hole in the bag. And um, so you want to kind of keep it loose, and but you also don't want it to fall in when the water comes out of the machine and um, and fills the bag. So uh, again, there's a, a practice curve there that you need to learn, and once you get that curve down, it uh, becomes substantially easier. Uh, so that's uh, kind of the end here that we have for the uh, putting the bags in, and uh, we'll get back to uh, making a run on the machine here. All right, we're back, and I'm uh, just going to run over a few things here before we uh, come to the end. Um, I didn't mention sprayers before, and sprayers are an important part of kind of collecting the hash after you pull the bag. You definitely want to get a good sprayer. You can use a hand sprayer that you would, uh, you know, like a hand pump sprayer that would um, you would maybe use to cl uh, use it for cleaning agents or something like that. That does work. It, it's it's you know if it, if you have arthritis, it's not the option you want to use. Um, if you struggle with uh, repetitive motion, it's not the option you want to use. Um, but again, if you if it's the only thing you can find in your area for the time, you can totally do that. Even if, it, if you can't find a sprayer, you can use a one gallon jug, put your couple fingers over the, the hole and kind of just pour and let it run around and push all the material down. That's going to be the ba most basic way to do it. Um, you can step up to like a pesticide sprayer. So you could go to Home Depot or you could go to Lowe's or any hardware store and look for like a 10 gallon pesticide spray, uh, excuse me, a 10 gallon pesticide sprayer. Um, again, you're not going to want to contaminate it with pesticides. You're not going to want to use it for Korean natural farming inputs or Jadam or anything else. Label it with the words hash making only, put a label maker sticker on it, draw a star on it, whatever it is you got to do. Um, but basically only use that for hash making so that it's not contaminated with any other inputs or anything like that. 
Um, that hand pump sprayer that you can get from Home Depot, it's like a 10 gallon hand pump sprayer, uh, comes with a wand. That's a good option to use for home. It's cheap, it's probably about 25, 30 bucks at most. Um, and it's gonna do a decent job at getting the trichomes that are stuck to the side of the walls of the bag down to the bottom. Uh, a lot of people in the who are doing commercial production like to use sump pumps in a, um, an exterior 30 gallon uh, garbage can that is then um, run through a hose and uh, you just end up using one of these um, and then you spray down into the, the container and that really pushes down. We unfortunately are unable to use this at the location we're at today um, because the water is high in sulfur coming out of the tap uh, so it would contaminate our hash and uh, kind of give it that sulfurated uh, flavor. So we try to avoid that uh, and we just don't have the setup to run the pump here at this time. So uh, again, this is a video designed specifically for entry level uh, people or those people who are in areas where you just don't have resources to the things that would make the perfect setup. Um, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do to, to get through to, to figure it out and uh, that's how it is. So uh, make sure you have a really good sprayer. That's super important to help col uh, collect all the trichomes. It really will just get you the maximum yield and return um, from everything and uh, you'll be able to, to be more satisfied with your end results on that uh, for just a very uh, low input cost um, uh, purchase. Um, so yeah, so once you pull the bags out, you're gonna scrape them, you're gonna collect everything, put it on the parchment paper, put it on a drying screen or put it in a pizza box or on a piece of cardboard, anything that's gonna kind of let the water move out of it and, uh, and go um, uh, away from the hash so that it can dry quickly. So you don't particularly want to heat the hash. Um, that's going to really cause some degradation. You're going to lose some terpenes. It may convert some of the cannabinoids if you're heating it over time. Um, but uh, yeah, so basically look into um, when you pull out everything, uh, get it onto the parchment paper, get it on the drying screen, get it in front of a fan or put it into the Buchner funnel and use that to uh, help remove the water out of it. Or you can go ahead, if you do have the funds, to, to uh, get a hold of a uh, vacuum up or a freeze dryer. Uh, the freeze dryer will be the best option to help you uh, remove the water as fast as possible and get you the highest quality product at the end. Um, so now that you've got the uh, process set up, uh, you're either going to choose your air dry, your Buchner funnel air dry, which is a, another air drying technique or the freeze dryer. Um, you're going to go into storage. Uh, once your hash is dry and you've uh, um, determined that it's ready to store, you're going to want to either put it into a jar of some sort, a glass jar with a lid that can seal, um, and or put it into some cellophane, tie it up into a little ball and tighten it. Um, basically you want to keep air and moisture out and um, some folks will even put in um, some of those um, uh, tr uh, moisture transfer packs. Um, those will go in there. They work sometimes if you want to use those as well. I think they impart a per personally, I think they impart a flavor onto the, uh, the material when you use them. I avoid them, um, but that doesn't mean that other people don't like to use them and they're not successful with them. Um, they are uh, in their eyes and that's totally cool. All right, so some final thoughts here on the uh, end of our day making hash. Um, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that this process is kind of a gold in, gold out process. And that means using really high quality material will yield you really high quality hash as long as you do a good job um, sieving it. So if you start with lower quality material, you're going to definitely end up with a lower quality end product. Um, but that's the whole goal is get better at growing or get better at sourcing better material and then you will also probably get better at 
sieving hash over time because it'll be easier, your results will be better, and uh, you'll feel better about what you're actually doing. Um, so that's really important. And uh, be patient about what you're doing. It is a long, monotonous process um, that you have to be repetitive over and over again. Um, if you're only growing once a year, then maybe it is only once a year uh, outdoor uh, material that you're using. Um, you're only going to be maybe making hash once or twice a year then. So if not, if you're growing indoors, you're going to have more practice. Or if you have the ability to grow auto flowers outdoors, you can use those to practice with too. That will just help refine your technique um, to get better for the full terms or um, the indoor or whatever it is you're deciding to do um, with your, your production method. Um, also, if you're looking for more information about how to do this, because this is a very casual uh, video and uh, um, it kind of just getting you the basics of what's going on, go on to social media sites like Instagram or Facebook. Take a look at people out there. There's a bunch of people. Obviously, Frenchy Cannoli, um, rest in peace, Frenchy. He was uh, one of the best hash makers in the world, and he, you know, has a ton of information on his uh, Instagram page. Um, his wife. Uh, Ma Madame Cannoli and uh, his apprentice, Cherry B uh, Blossom Bell, are also putting on classes all over uh, the United States. Uh, they were just did a class in California, and, um, and so they're a great resource as well, too, uh, to uh, pass on the tradition of hashish making and temple ball production. Um, there's also other people like Jen Do. Um, she's an amazing hash maker. Um, she's up in the Northeast and she uh, is, will answer your questions and help you get on the right pathway to making better hash. Resin Ranch in California is another great person to take a look at. Um, there's a variety of people out there, but also be respectful because Gendo and Resin Ranch will just likely quickly tell you to fuck off if you are being very impolite or pushy. Um, remember, these people have thousands of people following them and they can't get to every single question every day. But if you're patient and you wait or if you go through their scrolls and watch, uh, go through their posts and you go through their timelines, you can find the bits and pieces of information that they, they give out for free and, um, and you'll be able to be f more successful faster in your production and in your hash making so be respectful be patient and uh, have a good time and, and as far as making all the hash because that's the real end goal is to ha enjoy what you're doing make a great hash product and uh, and then enjoy that when you're when you're finished with it so if you have any other questions throw them down in the uh, the comment section there I'll do my best to, to jump on and answer them when I can um, I appreciate you hanging out with us here today uh, with this in, uh, video get to help you get off the ground and, and get started um, my name is Tyler Marquardt and uh, hope to see you and smoke some hash with you sometime soon. Cheers.